So we see that there are signs of judgment. We find the flood in the ship of Noah. We find the fire blackened mountain. We find the execution site with the earthquake crack. We find the Ark of the Covenant with blood on the mercy seat. We find the tablets of stone with the Ten Commandments. And I suggest for your consideration that this forms a basis for careful introspection and self-examination. And so we see that in a very real way, Northcliffe is very visible evidence of a flood. And therefore, if you like, a sign of judgment. And I suggest to you, whatever mountains are close to you, whatever valleys and gorges are close to you, these two represent signs of judgment. Signs of massive tectonic upheaval, massive depths of water, massive water action laying down sediments. In certain cases, massive domes, upthrust, water action cutting off the top of the dome in the case of the Vidvatasrant. Massive water action cutting the valleys into the dome or cutting away the material in the side of Table Mountain or cutting out the uh, gorge that you see there of the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls. In fact, almost everywhere you go on earth, you are surrounded by signs of judgment if you have eyes to see. Are you prepared like Noah? Or? This begs the question, is there another judgment or is this all history? Should you be concerned at all this? Or is it just history and nothing to worry about? Did Yeshua live and die to warn of judgment to come and provide a means for you to escape judgment to come? Or was he just any man executed by the Roman authorities of his time? Let's look at some other indications of coming judgment. The book of Revelation, the last book in most Bibles. said The dead were judged and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 21, 5 to 8. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his mighty one, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Notice that the unbelievers are categorized as a specific category, so everything else there refers to believers. And notice that it is possible to have a part in the lake of fire, not just spend eternity there. Some indications of coming judgment spoken by Yeshua. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, hear let him hear. Yeshua speaking again, then he will say to those on the left hand, Depart from me. You cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Other references. Go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. Came to send fire on the earth. Fire will test each one's work. The elements will melt with fervent heat. I'd like to point out to you from some of the images shown in the introduction to this presentation where we've seen photographs showing millions, possibly even billions of stars, each one of which are at least as hot as our sun, many much hotter than the sun, that eternal fly, fire is technically entirely plausible. On the other hand, there are also alleged to be great rewards. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. I will give to eat from the tree of life, shall not be hurt by the second death. I will give power over the nations. I will not blot out his name from the book of life. I will grant to sit with me on my throne. So this begs the question, where will you spend eternity? What I consider to be the most important document I've ever written is in, contained on the CD at the end of the set, 
was available from my website, Where Will You Spend Eternity? It's an in-depth analysis of the Bible or the book relating to coming judgment, discusses the basis of judgment, discusses the continuum from the deepest part of the lake of fire to the highest thrones in heaven. It looks at the guidelines that are given as to how to be favorably rated on the day of judgment. It's vital reading if you have any way been constructively challenged by this presentation to seek a close walk with the Almighty Creator. As I mentioned, I regard this document as the most important item I've ever written, and I've written literally thousands of documents. If you're not sure, ponder. If you've never considered the possibility of a judgment in which you will participate, the last few slides are potentially highly challenging. If you claim to believe in some way and have not realized that you face judgment, the same comment applies. If you have known that there is a judgment and that you will participate but have not realized that you can still face outer darkness or a high throne or anything in between, the same applies. Ultimately, there is nothing more important than where you will spend eternity. I hope that this presentation has challenged you on this. To sum up, there was a global flood, there is a creator, there will be a day of judgment, there is a lake of fire, there is a place of beauty with thrones for eternity, and we have a choice about how we live our lives. I leave you to reflect on your beliefs and see if they fall into the same category as believing in steady state conditions on earth for millions of billions of years in an unstable universe. A prayer of repentance if you are a believer but you're not being prepared for judgment. Father, I come to you in the name of Yeshua. I now recognize that there is a judgment to come and that I will participate in it. I'm not prepared. I ask you to forgive my error and forgive my sin in the name of Yeshua. I ask you to lead me and guide me to prepare myself in order that I may overcome in the days ahead and be found a good and faithful servant on the day of judgment. Amen. You can contact me if you need support or more information at james at etimin.org. If you have not previously believed, if you were a cynic or a septic and had discounted the flood, discounted the existence of a creator, and you've now concluded that in fact this is a possibility, you might want to pray something along the lines of the following. Father, I come to you in the name of Yeshua. I recognize that I've not previously believed in your existence, but that you do indeed exist. I ask you to forgive my sins in the name of Yeshua and to give me another chance. I ask you to guide me in all things and particularly to help me to find the material I need to read, hear, etc., and to meet people who can help me. Help me to overcome to the end that I may be found a good and faithful servant. Amen. Some useful points you might want to pray no matter where you are on this continuum. Father, please bring the people you want into my life and take the people you don't want out. Open the eyes of my understanding to see what you want me to see and close my eyes to what you do not want me to see. Open my ears to hear what you want me to hear and close my ears to what you do not want me to hear. Help me to speak only what you want me to speak and to refrain from saying those things that are not appropriate or not pleasing to you. Lead me in every possible way and teach me to be led by your Spirit. Fill me with your Spirit and let the fire of your Spirit burn out all in my life that's not pleasing to you. Speak to me in whatever way I can hear you through books, CDs, DVDs, the internet, email, radio, TV, through people I meet or in any other way I'm able to hear you. Help me to be sensitive to your leading and help me to know you more day by day.